Jesse, get a do 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 do. Hey yo and welcome back to my channel where I talk about writer things, parent things, and writer parent things. This week we're going to be discussing kids' decisions and how much control they should or shouldn't have. Do remember folks that I am speaking from the experience of having three kids who are eight, seven, and five right now. I do not pretend to be an expert on the topic, however, I'm sharing my experiences in the hopes that it can help somebody or other people can just relate. I want to go ahead and take the time to establish a few things, such as children are tiny humans. However, they are not adults. They lack the wisdom, experience, and general understanding of a lot of things in life to make the really big decisions for themselves such as choosing a shot or two-week medication to get over strep. My mother wisely chose the shot for me when I was eight. There are going to be a lot of different choices at a lot of different ages that parents are just going to have to make for their children. That's okay. It's not glamorous, it's not easy, and they are definitely not going to thank us most of the time. But hey, it's what we gotta do. It's just part of the gig. And before anybody gets their knickers in a twist, I would like to go ahead and bring up my next point, which is that kids aren't stupid. They have more capacity to understand things than they're generally given credit for. It's a fact that some kids mature faster than others. Some catch on to things quicker than others, but that doesn't change the fact that in general, children just aren't stupid. A little explanation can go a long way. I used to really, really hate being told no, and then when I asked why, being told, well, just cuz. It was a lot easier for me to accept a refusal when I understood the reason I was being denied, even if I didn't agree with it. And I'm talking about like as far back as I can remember, which I have memories from when I was like four or five. So far, this has proven true with my own children as well. Although the little butts do try to outreason us sometimes, much like I tried to do to my own parents, but still, the point holds that kids, kids are actually pretty smart. The next thing I wanna point out should be obvious, but sometimes everybody needs to be reminded. Kids have personalities, they're all different. Our middle child strives to remember and understand every single reason we give him for anything, big or small. Our youngest, once we tell her why, she just kind of accepts it and goes about her day. Our oldest, however, if he doesn't like the reason or if he doesn't like it, a battle of wills commences. Despite the battle of wills that occasionally commences, I still feel it's really worth it to explain it to him because over time he understands and it doesn't become an issue anymore. And yes, yes, kids need discipline. I agree, discipline is very important. However, refusing to allow children to ever question authority or assert their feelings is not the same thing as discipline to me. My parents taught me that it was okay not to blindly follow rules and to question why they were put there in the first place, even allowing me to argue a little bit as well. And you know, I think I turned out pretty damn fine. So I'm hoping to replicate those results or better. Keeping in mind the established points that kids are people but not adults, they are not stupid, and that they are all unique. One of the best parenting tips that I have ever found, I read somewhere when I was first pregnant with our oldest. I don't remember where it was that I read it, but whatever, I still remember the advice. And that is that being a toddler seems pretty frustrating. After all, now they're learning how to manage their emotions. They're becoming self-aware to where they are in relation to the rest of the world. Their bodies are on occasion just uncomfortable or painful with growth spurts. Everything can just feel or seem absolutely overwhelming. And on top of all that, they have absolutely zero control. They have no control over their clothes, no control over their food. They don't get to pick where they go. Absolutely everything is decided for them and they're expected to just be okay with it. Giving them control over something can go a long way in helping them feel better. We can let them help pick out snacks by putting like five snacks out on a table and going, hey, which one do you want? 
We can let them pick which shirt they want to wear, pick out their own pants, or even ask them, hey, do you think we should have spaghetti or mac and cheese for dinner tonight? Just anything can go a long way. Now, I have actually seen somebody argue against this by proclaiming that they would never let their children step foot outside in the snow with no shoes on, which just seemed willfully ignorant to me and refuses to acknowledge that children can, in fact, use reason and logic. Instead of just assuming that children would let their feet freeze off in the snow, Instead, I think it's just better to let them feel that snow is cold and then explain that socks and shoes keep our feet warm. Then they can choose the proper footwear for the weather and hey, they're happy, we're happy, compromise. As they get older, compromises begin to take different forms. When we were remodeling the children's rooms, I researched floor types and paint brands that would be suitable for, well, having kids and pets. However, we did show the kids the flooring type I selected and let them pick the colors as well as the color of their walls. And they've picked out their own bed sets as well as helped decide where the furniture goes in their bedrooms. <laughs> Our youngest and I have rearranged her room a few times as she experiments with different ways to show off her paint supplies and shoes. An unexpected benefit of letting them pick the aesthetics of their rooms is that they don't complain about cleaning them nearly as often anymore. They actually take a pride in keeping their rooms clean now. Revisiting discipline. Now, while I do allow my children to argue back to an extent, there is a difference between I don't wanna clean my room while they're cleaning their room and I won't clean my room. In one of these, they're still doing what I asked. Whining about it doesn't change that and allows them an outlet for their displeasure. It would be pretty hypocritical of me to not allow them that when I whine about getting a shot every time I have to get one. I do it, but I still want to voice how much I don't want to do it. An outright refusal to clean their bedroom is different because it is disrespectful. It is not respecting the house rules that their rooms are theirs and therefore their responsibility to maintain them. So fine, they don't want to clean their room. That means they don't need the privilege of TV, video games, or really leaving their room to play with their siblings. While we as parents do ultimately dictate the rules of the house and give the kids the privileges that they enjoy, Handling situations like this at home is a safe and easy way for us to teach them that their choices have consequences. They can choose not to clean their rooms and then they're not be allowed their privileges. Or they can choose to clean their rooms and then do whatever they want afterwards. I'm not gonna pretend this is perfect or that the kids don't have their moments where they are disrespectful or obnoxious, but nobody's perfect. No human is and especially not ones still learning how to manage their emotions and figure out where exactly they place in the world. We actually had to, for the first time in his life, implement grounding on our middle child last month. He had gotten into this habit of whenever he and his brother were fighting while playing the PlayStation, he would just open his brother's PlayStation to anger him. And no matter how many times we told him not to, no matter how many times out he was given, he just refused to listen, so he got grounded from every video game system in the house. Now after a few days went by, he did what he usually does, and he explained to me where he went wrong and what he wasn't going to do. And he would remind me of this every day during his grounding. And this wasn't in an attempt to be ungrounded sooner, this was just he felt it was very important for me to understand that he had learned his lesson and that he did not plan to do it again. Now. He's been ungrounded for a bit and he hasn't done it again. So hopefully it holds up and we won't ever have to do this again. Otherwise he'll be grounded again and you know, choices, consequences, rinse, repeat. Going back to the clothes example, because I know that it's not a perfect example and that sometimes kids do want to wear sweaters in 90 degree weather or they don't want to wear shoes in the cold weather. But I believe that there's still a safe way to teach them there are consequences to these choices. For our kids, they like to wear long sleeves and hoodies in 90 degree weather. So what I would do is just pack tank tops. Or they would refuse to wear jackets 
when it was supposed to rain, so I would take their jackets in the car. I just believe that sometimes it's really hard to convince a child that they're going to sweat and overheat in a long sleeve and hoodie when they don't actually have a concept or understanding of what overheating is. So letting them be in the sun for a little while till they start to get hot and sweaty and then having them switch to a tank top, they, they can feel the difference. They'll, you know, learn. It's just, it's a safe way to let them grasp those concepts. So now when I tell my kids it's gonna rain, they grab their coats. If I tell my kids it's hot outside, they change into tank tops and shorts. When they know that it's cold outside, they grab their jackets. They just have to learn the concepts of hot, cold, rain, snow. All right, everybody, that's all I have for you today. What kind of choices do you let your kids make for themselves? Did you have a lot of control over your childhood? Let me know in the comments down below. I do live streams every Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you want to see if I can write or just check out my website, the URL is samanthalnasset.com. Or if you'd prefer to just stalk me on social media, that's cool too. I'm at Samantha L. Nassett on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook. I make new videos and post them every Wednesday. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, comment, maybe subscribe to the channel, ring that bell so that you're notified whenever my videos or live streams go live. Thank you very much. Sam out. Sam out. Do, 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 do.